How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be doing a video on tire pressure monitoring systems. I'm going to be sharing with you some information related to that. I'm work currently working on a Jeep and as you can see here we have the right hand front wheel is not actually reading and we've got the TPMS light on as well. So I'm going to be taking you through the steps I use to both diagnose and fix this fault. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, tire pressure monitoring systems, you can have, uh, let's say, two different types, direct and indirect, we'll say. So direct being you're getting the information direct from the wheel, and you can have a reading of pressure on each one of your wheels in on your dash, and you're able to monitor that as it drops out. So we can see here there is sensors in these, and we need to determine whether this wheel may have been switched, the sensor may have failed, and we need to check that. So someone could have put on the spare wheel and that's why it's not reading, or they could have a sensor that's not reading. So we need to check that over and confirm what that fault is. The indirect type is when the information is got from the ABS side, the wheel speed rotation. So the amount of rotation that your wheels do, if one of them uh, pressure drops out, it's gonna alter that uh, rotation of the wheel. The um, monitoring system on, through the ABS and the wheel speed sensor is gonna be able to detect that and then it throws on the tire pressure light. That's why you have in some vehicles an actual reset button, like in a Mazda, in some Volkswagens, in, in loads of different vehicles. You have a reset button, which after you alter the pressure, you can go in and change that. In um, Hondas, you go in through the infotainment side, um, through the steering wheel, and you can reinitialize the tire pressures after you change it. So there's two, two different ways of monitoring it. This way is gonna monitor it more closely, and you're gonna have an accurate read all of the time the other way isn't necessarily as good but it is very effective as well and it does the job that it needs to okay with that said let's get this back to the workshop and let's start to uh, analyze that right hand front wheel when you are working with vehicles that have these sensors in the wheels themselves, you're gonna to have to have a compatible tool that's able to work with that. So I have my Think tool here. This is the X2. It's got the tire pressure monitoring um, system uh, functionality on it. And it's got on the top here, uh, that's where you actually um, learn in the new sensors uh, off this side. So I'll be able to actively check them and uh, put in a new sensor using this tool. You will have to have a compatible tool to fix um, an issue with a direct type system. Back at the workshop, the first thing I do is to check all the tire pressures and make sure they're all equal. I have confirmed that the right hand front one is the same as the rest of them. And then I go about checking for fault codes in the TPMS. There is four fault codes stored, but the first three fault codes that are stored are location undetermined faults. I'm not worried about those as I can relearn in the sensors into place if needed. The one I'm focused on mainly is the fourth fault code, which is the important one, C1502, Tire Pressure Sensor 2 Component Internal Failure. So the next check after that is to look at the live data readings and confirm that Sensor 2 fault. So I click read data stream, then I select all the PIDs and scrolling to sensor one, the reading, I change it to PSI and it's showing 32.6. Scrolling down, I can see that sensor two is showing zero PSI and that is confirming that the fault is there. Scrolling down to tire three is 33 PSI is the reading on that. Tire four, 32 PSI. So I'm all getting confirmation of the readings. Now that I have that done, I have pretty much confirmed the fault. You can do a frequency check at each sensor if you want to see if there's any output coming from that. It's not really needed at this point, but there are two frequencies that these sensors output. 315 megahertz is one and 433 megahertz is the other. The um, TPMS tool will be capable, capable of pulling either of those frequencies and the next thing in my case is to actually take the wheel off, 
take that tire off and start to get that new sensor installed. So when removing the old sensor, there's only a couple of things you have to do. You have to remove the sensor from the valve itself, which is usually held in by a Torx or a hex head. Then using a side cutters, I cut the lower base of it and then I use my um, valve installation tool to actually pull through that old valve out of it and I use a block of timber and a rag just to protect the rim as I leverage against it. I use the same method when installing the new one. I use that block of timber and rag as a protection and I use that tool to pull it into position. Then it's a simple case of installing the um, hex or torx uh, screw into position and tightening that sensor up against the valve. The sensors that I'm using are the universal type. They're by Thinkcare. They're the S3 rubber valve ones and they can do both frequencies. So they are more than suitable for this job. Uh, any suitable TPMS tool from Thinkcare will actually do this. There are cheaper options than the scan tool I'm using here. There is a one as well that you can get which will do the programming for you but I need to program in the new sensor into position now when programming a new sensor you can use the old sensor ID if needed or available you can pull it from the sensor itself or you can pull it from the information um, that's already stored potentially or you can generate a random ID code for that new sensor using your TPMS tool which is what I do here it's very straightforward and simple and once you generate that you can relearn um, it into position and then you will be all good to go. And that was the installation process, that was the program process. I went around, checked all of the sensors are now reading which you're seeing here and then it was time to bring the vehicle for a road test. So the new sensor is now installed and it has been learnt into the vehicle. As you can see there now, we have 2.4 reading, so a little bit of a pressure differential, which I'll adjust down. The tire pressure monitoring light is off as well, and this has been a success. So using the correct tool, which in this case was the Think Tool X2 uh, with the TPMS feature, was able to uh, install that new sensor and then activate it in and relearn it into it. It took around 10 to 15 minutes of a drive after activating it to be able to uh, read it which is normal on these vehicles and and that is it so that is how you would go about rectifying a problem if you have it in your TPMS using those tools I really hope you enjoyed this video I hope you found it useful and informative if you did please like share comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching